Why it sucks to be born a tripid fish. You're three seconds old. Size, just over one millimeter. Roughly the width of a human eyelash. And life has already decided you're a chew toy. There's a parasite, an isopod the size of a grain of sand, latched onto your tail. And it's eating you like it's late for a meeting. You haven't even escaped your egg fully. Half your body is still wrapped in goo. And already you're being disassembled from the rear. You jerk violently and rip yourself free. Congratulations. You're born. Minus 12% of your tail. Around you, about 80,000 siblings are hatching. Some are tangled in egg slime. Some have two parasites. Some are already hollow. This isn't a family reunion. This is a massacre. You can't see yet, but you feel the chaos. Twitching bodies, biting mouths, and something slicing the water like a hot knife. A needle-thin eel larva cuts through the cloud. Its mouth opens and closes like scissors with anger issues. In two seconds, it swallows four of your siblings whole. Then it turns toward you. You don't fight. You go limp. You splay your fins and pretend to be the ocean's most useless creature. A jellyfish. A floppy, probably toxic blob. The eel pauses, then passes. It works. You're still alive. Welcome to life as a tripid fish. You're one week old. Size? Six millimeters. Roughly as long as an aspirin. Which is perfect, because you're about to witness pain. You've figured out how to hunt. Kind of. Turns out if you float inside clumps of algae and stay very still, tiny copepods just swim right into your face. Today you've caught four, which makes you a genius compared to your siblings, most of whom were eaten yesterday. But then you smell something new. Blood. It hits your nervous system like caffeine in an empty stomach. Every instinct you have screams. Follow it. You do. You find a dying fish twice your size bleeding out near the surface. Its wing fin is shredded. Its guts are half out. It's beautiful. You rush in, and you're not alone. Twenty other larvae are already ripping it apart. Damselfish, wrasses, triggerfish, little monsters with baby teeth. You dart in, bite off a chunk, and it's glorious, warm, rich, gamey. It's the biggest meal of your life. Then everything goes dark. A tuna easily a hundred times your size, explodes through the cloud of feeders like a torpedo with an appetite. Its mouth opens wide enough to vacuum up the entire party. You snap back into jellyfish mode, limp, useless, and inedible. It works again. The tuna passes. But this time you learn something horrible. The best meals? They always come with a price tag. You're six weeks old. Size? Three centimeters about the length of a crayon that's been chewed on by a toddler. Which is fitting, because things are about to get messy. You've survived longer than 90% of your siblings, mostly thanks to the jellyfish trick and sheer dumb luck. You've eaten enough to trigger the next phase of your life, and it's awful. It starts with your eyes. They burn. Then they itch. Then they start to sink into your skull like hot wax. You try to see, but it's not just blurry. Your eyes are literally dying. Then come the fins. The bones inside them stretch like pulled taffy. Your body tries to swim. It can't. You move like a broken kite underwater. Then the pressure in your head builds. Something inside you screams. Go deeper. You obey. At 500 meters, you lose your vision. At 1,200 meters, your swim bladder collapses. At 2,000 meters, your fins are longer than your whole body. At 3,800 meters, you stop looking like a fish and start looking like a fever dream. At 4,000 meters, you hit the seafloor. It's just above freezing, and the pressure is enough to crush a car. You're officially a deep-sea creature now, and you're going to spend the next few years in this cold, dark hell. You've seen fish with no eyes swimming downward into a freezing nightmare, and this is just the halfway point. The parasites haven't even shown up yet. So if you're still watching, ask yourself, what kind of mind writes this stuff? Exactly. Subscribe now. Because it only gets worse from here. You're four months old. Size? 13 centimeters. About as long as a broken TV remote. You're no longer cute. You're a living antenna with commitment issues. You've spent the last two months standing still. 
literally. Your three stupidly long fins work like legs now. You don't swim. You hover one inch above the ocean floor, like a ghost with nowhere better to be. You've mastered the art of patience. You wait and wait, and then something drifts past. Something small, edible, and blind. You tilt your fins, generate a microcurrent. Snack secured. It's not glamorous. You burn 50 calories to catch 60, but it keeps you alive. Then something changes. You feel it. Something just landed on your back. Tiny, sharp, uninvited. A simithoid isopod, a parasite from the same family as the ones that attacked you at birth. Except this one's smarter. It doesn't try to kill you. It latches on and drinks your blood. Not enough to end you, just enough to keep you weak forever. You try to rub it off. The seafloor is too smooth. You twist. You writhe. You almost snap a fin. Nothing works. It's staying. And then, it lays eggs. On you. Weeks later, they hatch. Little baby parasites crawl across your body like tourists choosing hotel rooms. Three of them stay. You now have four passengers. They take 15% of everything you eat. They make you weaker, so you catch less food. So they get hungrier, so they drink more. A cycle of failure. But you don't die, you just keep standing, like a rusting tower in the middle of nowhere. You're 10 months old, size 25 centimeters, about the length of a school ruler, but bent and miserable. You're barely alive. You haven't eaten in nine days. Three of your parasites have stopped moving. You're not even producing enough blood to keep your own tormentors alive. Then, you smell something. Not food. Something else. A chemical signature you haven't smelled in months. Another tripod fish. You unhook your fins, which now takes over 10 seconds because everything hurts. You start walking, if you can call it that. More like dragging your body with three sticks. It takes you four hours to move 12 feet. And then, there they are. Another tripod fish. Standing, facing the current covered in parasites, worse off than you. You stand next to them. Neither of you moves. You don't talk. You don't touch. You just stand. And for the first time in nearly a year, you're not alone. Then something even weirder happens. You both release gametes. That's right. Reproduction. But not the normal kind. You were born male, but stress, starvation, and trauma have been messing with your hormones. Now you're somewhere in between. So when you spawn, it's not just sperm. It's sperm and eggs, all at once, like a confused biology experiment. Most won't fertilize. Most that do will hatch deformed and die within hours. Your partner does the same, then leaves. No bonding, no goodbye. Just genetic roulette in the dark. You stand there, wondering if anything you just did mattered. Spoiler, probably not. You're one year old. Size? 32 centimeters. Roughly the length of a Subway sandwich. If someone stepped on it, drained the sauce and left it in the dark. You've made it through the worst odds in the animal kingdom. But not for much longer. You haven't eaten in 12 days. Your parasites are dying. Which means you're not even nutritious anymore. You're barely able to stand. Your fin system locks up. You try to collapse and move. Your body says no. Then, movement. That same tripod fish. The one you spawned with. They're still alive. Barely. They drag themselves next to you. They're in worse shape. Parasites rotting on their back. Eyes sunken. Fins trembling. Neither of you speaks. Because neither of you has a voice. But you stand together. For six days. On the seventh day, something massive rises from the darkness. A six-gill shark. Four meters long. It doesn't even glance at you. You're not worth the bite. It goes for your partner. One clean chomp. Gone. The shark drops the corpse beside you. Half a fish, half a memory. You can smell their chemistry fading from the water. You try to move. You can't. The fin system is frozen. You're locked in place. Three hours later, it finally releases. You walk away. Eight hours to move six feet. You find a new spot. Pump your fins stiff, face the current, alone again, and a week later, your heart stops. Not from starvation, not from injury, not from predators.
Your body just gives up, quietly, invisibly, without protest. The parasites crawl off. The amphipods move in. Your eyes are gone by morning. Within a week, you're nothing. Just three bones sticking out of the mud like broken towers. You survived 99.999% mortality at birth. You faked being a jellyfish more than 400 times. You hunted blind in a frozen hell. You endured parasites, starvation, and absolute isolation. And you died of nothing. No music, no climax, just subtraction. But hey, there's an animal out there with a life even worse than this. Watch the next video. You'll never complain about Mondays again.